and a woman, woman, woman in every way. Yeah, yeah, I'm living my life, 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 living day by day. Yeah, yeah. Are you in Welcome every to Every Way Woman. woman. There are some major changes happening in the talk show world. Live from Los Angeles, here's Every Way Woman. of your friends that women are kind of stepping in on the men. Okay, but I'm not exactly sure what you mean. Like, women are becoming football players? <laughs> no, <laughs> well, <laughs> there are women who are trying to be on men's pro teams. So, you know, there's the woman who just joined as one of the assistant coaches right, on yeah. a men's basketball mm -hmm. team. What do you think about that? Um, if a woman's trying to be a coach on a man's basketball team, it's not that she isn't smart enough to understand strategy and all of that, but there are physiological and psychological thought processes and things that are going on in a man's body that a woman may not fully understand. So yeah, I think you can cross boundaries sometimes where you take it too far. Absolutely. So do you think we've taken it too far? I, I think in some ways we have. Not that because I'm saying women can't be everything that they want to be or they're not right, smart enough exactly. or they're not, you know, it's just that sometimes it's like, no, actually you can't be a man. You know, you can you be a basketball player? You just be a proud woman. There's yes, nothing that, about me that wants that, to be a man. Why not coach women's basketball? Clear, I don't want to be a man. Team. Why teach? You know, why go into men's sports? Why? Why not teach? If you're a woman, right. why not coach women? There's you understand so much work that on. needs to be done with women. I okay. really wish that instead of competing to be a man, we invested our time in supporting the growth and evolution I of women. I wish I could get up and kiss you right now because that's so cute. <laughs> <laughs> because what what happened to just being a plain old woman? Mm. sexy, vibrant, yeah. you know, educated, nurturer of the family. Why do we feel that? Because the man is moving here, we got to do that because there's some, some reason we're going to fall behind. We're not equal. You know, Sorry, people. Men and women are, right. are not we are equal. equal. We're not, we're not even equal. We're not even designed we're, the same yeah. way. Well, and on that note, I have friends who go to their jobs specifically not dressed feminine, not for practical reasons, but because they feel in their office they won't earn the same respect as a man. Yeah, that's true. So they true. step into this role of almost dressing more manly. Yeah, but you know, a little cleavage will get you a little. <laughs> well, to me, it's like, I want to wear a tutu and heels and be treated the same way. Bring it on. There, I don't want to have to do that. And I think it's such a shame that so many women feel that way. You know, you know there, instead there of being dressed like this, you know, they put on a suit there, to look like a man. Look, if, if, a, if a man showed up in his Superman shirt, you know, and expected someone to take him seriously, it, it would be hard to take him seriously. There's a place so we, for girl power and there's a place for man power. Right. It doesn't always cross. Um, you know, no, uh, when I, I, I want to be, I want to be girl power all the time, and I know it doesn't work. But when I when I wanted to grow up, when I was young, my hope, my we come from a military background and history of military, uh, you know, veterans in my family, and I wanted to grow up and be in the military. Right. And I was, I'm gonna, I was gonna be an officer in the military. And Were it you was trying rare. to think like a man? And you know, I didn't think of it that way. But yes, I got out into the dirt and I did all the stuff mm. with the boys. I did what the boys did. And I yeah. talked to a female officer, mm -hmm. and I'm trying to what figure out how, how, where am I going to go? Where am I going to go with this? And when I ta started talking to the to the female officers during that time, they discouraged me from going into the military. And I thought, well, are you jealous? I'm just younger. What's going on here? But the stories that they gave to me were like, no, that's not a place for women. The type of abuse that we received during that time, the type that you're be prepared to do? to, to uh -huh. get defiled regularly, Let me ask mentally, you this. physically. It, sometimes it just doesn't make sense. Why do we want to push ourselves to the point where we have to make but, but oh, what I think there's a point in what does that look like? Think like a man. What does that are we saying that women are subservient or sub and they're thinking? Did, what does that okay, look like? Isn't there a book written by I believe Steve Harvey yes, that says, he says think like a man, think, act like a woman. Exactly. A lady. Think like a man, act like a lady. It's gonna get you a lot farther if you understand the way a man 
thinks in the business world, in the romantic world, you will get farther. Because we're relating to other, we're relating to men. Because I don't want to leave with women that we're sometimes we're some dits because we don't think like men. No, absolutely no, not. Right. No, but there is an art to being able to understand the mind of a man. You can think yes. like a woman in, you know, understand the mind okay, of a man. Okay, I have a question. If there was a man sitting here talking to us about our menstrual cycle, how real do you think that I conversation would be? I can't stand that. When you go to a gynecologist, <laughs> this is totally off topic, but, no, but it's a man, and he tries to tell you how it feels. Like right, yeah, so I understand like, that like, every 28 no, days. No, right. No. Exactly. No. So, yeah, there's that crossing where men at some point are going to look at us and go, why am I having this conversation with you? Okay. Because there are conversations that we don't have with men because it doesn't make sense. Not that a man can't be educated. Right. Not I that a man that. can't understand it. I understand but that. But at some point we're like, do you bleed regularly? I no, don't no, know. Are, but do you okay. think we're disservicing well, women I mean, in saying I, this? I think that because we, we think, women think with their hearts, men think more factual. But if I be, begin to start thinking factual, I don't want you to say that I'm doing that because I'm trying to be like a man. No, I am in expanding my thought process. Yeah. That's why I don't want to necessarily leave that if you start thinking intelligently, you're thinking like a man. No, you're expanding your thoughts. But you're being a smart woman. We'll yes! Be smart woman. <laughs> Stay tuned. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Are you in every way woman? Are you in every way woman? Welcome back. So let's chat, ladies. Should couples get married when they're broke? Is there a time financially when it's better to tie the knot? <laughs> broke is relative. Uh, right, yeah, <laughs> that's true. That is so true. I, I, think they, I think it's good. I think it's okay. If a couple is, is ready to get married, you know, you don't have to have the big fancy, you know, spend tens of thousands of dollars on a wedding. You know, what, what, that's not why people get married. It shouldn't be a reason why You don't think there should be some sort of financial stability along with the emotional stability of the relationship to but build can, your future? But financial stability is something that you're always working towards. Right, right. You know, once you get to a place where you're comfortable, you're always still looking to move to another place where you can get more comfortable and look for a place. So it's evolving. Your right. financial relationship. Your financial well, I know my finances are <laughs> evolving. <laughs> I don't know about evolving. All right. But to Madison's point, I think in a marriage what happens you do is you, you decide, you know, you should talk about it. Yeah. You should talk about, have that conversation before you get married. Hey, listen, this is where we are financially. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. enough with the you should. What did you and your husband do? Tell we me were, about that conversation. We were broke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We were broke. We didn't have a house. Um, he was just getting out of graduate school. I was working, so he didn't have a job. Um, but we knew that picture going in, so we got a little apartment. Did and he have we a were, ring? When he proposed to me, we did not have a ring. He no. could not afford to have a ring. Really? Right. So we didn't get one until 90 days before we got married. But we talked about it. See, that's the difference. We knew our picture going in. It wasn't like there was some expectation that he had a million dollars in the bank that he was hiding. And I think that's what's missing. People are not having the conversation. Well, but I think a lot of men, even, you know, guys I've been in relationships with in the past, have said, you know, I love you, but I've got to make a little more money, get myself financially stable before we build a future. And I'm wondering, is that an excuse because he doesn't really want to build a future? Or is he really concerned about his finances? I, th I think um, for most men, they are concerned about their finances. Men think about it more than women do. They want to see them. They visualize and see themselves, at least I think, in a way where they are successful and they're doing this and then they got the ring and then they got the girl. and the, So they have a different way of visualizing what marriage or weddings look like. As opposed to women, we'll just jump in. Right. We, oh, oh, yeah. It doesn't right. matter. Where's right. my twisty tie for a <laughs> ring? Right. I love yeah. my right. men. Yeah. Yeah. However, I did meet a woman who had said to um, a, a male friend of mine, she pulled out this picture in Cosmopolitan of this ring that was worth about $50,000 plus. Ooh. And she tore it out and she said, don't ask me to marry you until you can get me this. See, there's I, a lot of women out there who are like that, mm -hmm. who want to make sure their man can afford their lifestyle that they want for themselves. Absolutely. Now, at the, at the time, I was yes. like, okay, this is a bit shallow. However, at the same time, is I was it, like... Is it shallow? Because she just knows what she wants and she's honest yes, about it. Yes, on, on the flip she side, she was honest. She, she, she was let honest. him know, That's look, true. this is the kind of life I want to live in. If you can't give it to me, don't ask me to marry you. That's true. She but, should give it to herself. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Well, good that she was honest, but also as women, we have to identify potential. 
right? Mm -hmm. Where my husband and I are financially today, we weren't 22 years ago. Yeah. But again, we had you the conversation together. across the road. So sometimes mm -hmm. as women, I'm going to caution the $50,000 ring early okay. when it's not going to be sustainable. But, but also, it, what your vision of marriage may be different from someone else's. Right. My vision of marriage when I, when I got, got married was, and I remember saying this to my ex, saying, you know what, as long as we're happy, I'm okay if we live in a in a trailer park. Okay, right. so now, I'm now they, later on, years later, I get that repeated back to me <laughs> as if I didn't know that you wanted me to buy the trailer park. Well, no, but see, like I, I'm even <laughs> like, nervous. Well, I'm nervous to have that conversation why? about finances. And why? well, I mean, I don't really want to share all of my secrets. Well, what, what? Our purchases are like, I, I just, for some reason, it makes me very, very nervous and very hesitant Wait, to what's be completely what's secrets open. Are you keeping? But, yeah. Well, no, no, no I'm not necessarily secrets, but I mean, debt, I feel like a man who wants to marry me is like, ah, oh, but I don't want to be responsible for all her baggage. So I you feel that he'll reject Student you. loans, okay. car payments, et cetera, because I feel like that is just kind of a Okay, I, I'm a little old-fashioned that way, I think, but when I think when you have a marriage, you are Absolutely. marrying. You're marrying. Your, yes, your financial life along with your emotional life. Okay, along but with speaking with your emotional life, then, if you're not as financially stable, does that cause more problems in your relationship? But I, I think it's where you put no. the emphasis. You know what? It doesn't. It, yeah. You're right. It's where you put the emphasis. Again, you asked me, and I'll go back to, we didn't have a lot. We didn't have a lot. But what we had, and don't dismiss this, ladies, is we talked right. about what our future was going to look like mm -hmm. together. And we said we mm -hmm. only make mm -hmm. X amount of money. And we worked in those means. And I know people, And I didn't put pressure on him. I know couples who have had a lot of money, and they spent that money ignoring each other. Right. And mm -hmm. it didn't help them in their marriage. It's, it's, That's powerful. It's really relative. And I think I love it. It's really relative. You have a million dollars, you don't love each other. You have a yeah, dollar you for... Can, you, you can afford to spend more time away from each other. You split a taco ignore burrito, burrito, but you're happy because you look in each other's eyes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, on that note, we'll be back with more Everyday Woman. Stay tuned. I can buy my own trailer park now. Absolutely. <laughs> Put in Stay with us. We'll be right back. Are you in every way woman? You in every way, woman. Have you ever thought about making a career out of your passion for makeup? Well, keep watching because we're going to talk to Anna about just that next up on Every Way Woman. Welcome to Every Way Woman. So women are launching themselves into entrepreneurship, and today we're talking to Anna about just that. She turned her passion for makeup into her career. So tell me, what is it like to be a makeup artist? Girl, it's not all glam as it looks in the social media. What do you mean by <laughs> that? You know, honestly, like, if you look through the social media, all these people, you know, put up pictures. We only let you see what we want you to see. It is not all glam. It's you do put on a good face. <laughs> it's long hours, a lot of driving. I mean, real, really, my friends really know, they hardly ever see me. And it's a workout. I don't have a, a I've, life. Seen, <laughs> I've seen the case. You are lugging. Yes. I mean, you have to be in charge of all your own tools, your products. Yes, it's a lot of tools, a lot of products, you know. Um, searching for uh, different type of brands, you know, that fit different types of people. Um, not um, the expensive kind, too, sometimes. Some so, more, rewind. You know. Take me back to the moment when you decided you wanted to become a makeup artist. Wow. Well, I never really wanted to become a makeup artist. It, it was more of a hobby. It just happened. You just were. It just happened. I mean, I literally had a full-time job, um, and I, doing makeup and hair was just a hobby. I would do it for prom. I started back when I was 16, girl. <laughs> so how did you turn that into a business? <laughs> um, it just naturally happened. People were calling me. I remember I ended up doing a friend that um, ended up was gothic, and she ended up saying, you know, glam me up for my wedding. She wore the Gothic whole red glam. dress. No, she wore a red dress for her wedding with the That's with the bright. white veil. But I ended up transforming her. It was a whole transformation that people were like, "Wow, you did that!" And I think I was probably like 20 when I did that. How did that yeah. make you feel when you were able to transform someone? Well, in the beginning, it felt good. 
Now it's a different feeling because I end up helping organizations and nonprofits where I end up transforming and giving back and it's different like cancer patients, you know, stuff like that. And to see them pretty much, you know, get teary eyed and stuff like, oh my God, I can't believe you're doing my makeup. It feels good. It feels good. It feels like I'm doing something. And even if it's for those couple, you know, minutes, you know, that they're sitting in my chair, I'm happy that I touched a life in that yeah, way. Yeah, to make someone feel beautiful Definitely. is a true gift. And Definitely. you really have it. But thank you. There must be a pressure to always feel beautiful yourself. Oh, or to yeah. look beautiful. Oh, yeah. Every time I go into a, a job, I mean, all my ladies here probably know that when you go into a job, it's kind of hard to wake up every time, every morning, to put on your hair and put on your makeup. You know what I mean? So doing, being a makeup artist, you have to look presentable. You, you have to be the part. Oh, yeah. And especially me, I'm known for retro, so i got to wear my red rose. <laughs> <laughs> But so how long have you been working as a makeup artist? 18 years. 18 years. You don't look old enough. I hope nobody just said my age right now. <laughs> yeah. Nobody's doing math at home, Anna. I promise, <laughs> I promise you that. So what's next for you as a makeup artist? Well, definitely um, I want to do my own salon. I, I, I'm a type of person that anybody that knows me, I reach for the stars, you know, and, and nothing's impossible for me. So right now I, I have plans to be able to open up my own salon. But tell me about the networking. You have to network being a, a makeup artist. It's, it's really important to network. A lot of people that I, that I interact with, uh, inspiring makeup artists, they always tell me, like, I don't like to work with other people or, you know, stuff like that. And I just look at them, and even though I shake my head, it's like, girl, you got to learn to work with other people. It's all about networking. Well, yeah, what's the dynamic with your team? Oh, everybody in my team needs to know how to work with each other. That's why you're in my team. Mm -hmm. But definitely when you network, you end up finding another job. You know, a wedding could turn into a fashion show. The next person has maybe a connection to a celebrity. You know what I mean? So it's all like, you know, then you're working on movie sets. Then you're working, you know, so it's, it's And you're working on Every Way Woman, making us all look good and feel beautiful. Well, we're going to have more of your tips on a few more episodes of Every Way Woman. And, of course, you can find tricks on everywaywoman.com. More when we return. Stay tuned. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Are you in Every Way Woman? You in every way, woman. Up next, we have Manji from 88 Tequila bringing you Slim 88. Salud. If you're already being naughty with a cocktail, well, then who needs all the calories? Manji is back and she's talking about the Slim 88 today. But before we get to that, let's talk a little tequila. Okay. You are the tequila girl, aren't you? Yes. Yes. You're proud of that. Of course I am. Who's not proud of drinking tequila? No, but not only do you drink tequila, you work tequila. Yes. I mean, is your day ever not tequila? No. No. Because tequila is an everyday word. It, it's our brand. It's, it's because our passion. Because when my night is tequila, my morning hurts. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. You know? And how do you avoid that? Tequila has such this, like, kind of stigma. And this well, it depends on what kind of tequilas you drink and also how you drink them. So, for instance, ours is 100% blue agave. It's the good stuff. Obviously, the, it's high end, the more it costs, the better it is for you is pretty much how it works. So, Isn't that the story about life? Yeah. <laughs> Tell that exactly. to my father. Exactly. So, it, it has to do with what it's made with. It okay. has to do with the process and then also what you're mixing it with. If you're going to take tequila and pour a bunch of sweet syrupy products into it, it's going to give you a hangover because of all the sugar. Sugar and alcohol are typically what would cause you to not feel so great. So those multiple day. margaritas hurt? Depending on how they're made. I mean, it depends. So like do you the have one a family we're secret? Do. I mean, if your life is always tequila, what's the family secret? What's a hangover secret? Tell us. I drink a lot of water and an Advil before I go to bed. <laughs> so Oh, that come seems to on. help me. Okay, come on. All right. So, but is tequila typically like a skinny liquor? Um, it is. It's lower in fat. It's lower in calories overall, as well as it's actually good for your digestive system. It helps to tell that to my doctor. <laughs> actually, it, is it really? Yeah, it's it's a known fact that it helps with digestion. So. 
I mean, obviously it's still alcohol. It's still in moderation. I'm of not course. saying drink the whole bottle or anything like that, but definitely a little bit here and a there. A little to dose will do, yeah? Yeah. Absolutely. Okay, so typically, you know, people think vodka is a skinny thing, but we can go to tequila as we an can. option. Definitely. And I love to host events. So having awesome. a non margarita is. Thank you. Right, right, exactly. We like to do different things. So today we're doing the Slim 88, okay. which is lower in fat and lower in calories than your traditional margarita because you're Thank using you. all natural ingredients. And the first thing we're gonna do is pour some tequila. Why the te this tequila? So this is the Blanco? Yes. Okay. So we use this one because you're using less intense flavors and if you used a reposado or an añejo, you, you could, you definitely could, but you're gonna get more of the oakiness and the wood, whereas you wanna enjoy the lemon and lime flavors with Keep the Keep it agave. light, fruity, yeah, citrusy. exactly, okay. keep it fresh. You sure. Know? So let's do a shot. You could measure a two ounce shot typically okay. in the shot glass. Yeah, this, is, this, is a, this is a test, so you don't measure and I'll measure. I don't, you know what? Let's bartenders, see how you can free bartenders pour. usually do like a three second pour. So I'll just go ahead. She's, she's the pro here, obviously. And do that. Uh huh. And I'm just going to go ahead and. Uh, so let's hope I'm right. Let's, yeah, <laughs> I was going to say, let's see, let's see how good, you, oh my gosh. See, now I just... Okay, see, you just lost. That was, that was my fault. That was my fault. All right, I'm just going to free pour it in here, too. All so right. pour yours back in there. Pretend that never happened. And three. Got it. Okay, All right. what's next? All right, so we're going to go ahead and do the agave nectar. I want to, you know, I, mean, I always see people sniffing their liquor. What is, what's that about? It's just like it's just like when you go wine tasting. You want to definitely I'm smell to it. To you want to you want to inhale all the different ingredients and I'm inhaling just lemon. enjoy it. And when you taste you it, you'll be able too. to taste everything it, that you smell. It's important that you smell before you taste, isn't it? So then yes. you you taste more if, exactly. you, if you actually smell You pick smell it. up on more of the flavor okay, that way. Okay, absolutely. What's next? So we're going to do agave nectar. We'll just go ahead and squeeze a little bit in there. Gave nectar is very thick and very sweet. It's kind of it like, like honey. Kind of like honey. Kind of okay. like honey, but I personally think it's a little bit sweeter. Other people might think I mean, it's not. I mean, how much am I going here? I, I would stop right okay. there. I would just put a little bit. And then we're going to go ahead and squeeze some fresh lemon juice into this. And how fun are these glasses, too? I mean, yeah, one lady you. doesn't like a martini glass. <laughs> it seems very sophisticado, if you will. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and just squeeze the lemon Woo! talk about fresh lemon juice look at that i love that what is this lemon squeezer i guess i don't know what it's what technically called have, because you know this is how i usually squeeze my lemons let me show you and then i and you're more than welcome to yeah well but then i get the seeds exactly and you get a lot more juice this way okay well that's that's good to know okay and then yours is do... always going to be prettier than mine that's just how it is <laughs> Now we've then got we're gonna some do lime the too. lime as well. All right, you know I'm just free pouring freehand in this All one. All right, over that's here. fine. And, and most bartenders would make better. it that way. Sure, so. sure, sure. What else do we have? And then you can add a little light um, ice if you ice. want. Sure, sure, sure. Just to chill it a little bit. And then what we like to do to spice it up sometimes is just toss a few jalapenos in there. <laughs> Well, talk about the jalapenos. Well, I don't know if I can handle those. I'm going to let Patsy try mine. Okay. And for this information, you can go to everywaywoman.com. Thanks so much, Maggie. Cheers. Salute. Nice. How is it? <laughs> Every Way Woman gives back to the community. Go to everywaywoman.com to find out how you can match our donations of undergarments for needy kids. Thanks for getting to know Every Way Woman. This has been an Everyway Woman production. I'm an everyday woman, 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 in every way, yeah, yeah. I'm living my life, 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 living day by day, yeah, yeah. Are you an everyway woman?